Billie Jean King, Breaking Barriers in the 1970s Women's Movement. In 1970s America, a second wave of feminism was on the rise. Feminists lobbied for reproductive rights, the same access to education as men, and equal funding for athletic programs. Their efforts were not always taken seriously, as many men and women alike believed that a woman's place was still in the home. Well, tomorrow, 50 years after we gave them the vote, the women are going to strike to support their liberation demands. Thankfully, Cedar Rapids' women's liberation movement is pretty much dormant. If I knew uh, what they were going on strike for, I'd be able to answer. No, I don't believe I will. I don't think that's necessary at all. I don't think too much of it. A woman's place is in the home. So remember, men, if you come to work tomorrow and your secretary refuses to do the filing and then go home and find that your wife has refused to do the cooking, don't blame them. Remember, you gave them the vote 50 years ago. This is Mike Scott, male chauvinist, TV9 Eyewitness News. These sexist norms of society were soon challenged by tennis legend Billie Jean King's success on the tennis court. King became a key figure in breaking these gender barriers during her celebrated tennis career and famed battle of the sexes match against Bobby Riggs. In the wake of the male-dominated mid-20th century and rise of the second wave of feminism, Billie Jean King strives for equality and victories on the court, enforced Title IX, and created a space for women to excel in athletics. Her efforts improved rules of major tennis organizations and immediately encouraged women's involvement. Yet her success did not cement equality for women in professional sports and the workplace. Looking back on her career and a speech to the HRC, King notes that her career and her drive for success was always about more than just tennis. I promised myself um, that if I could help make a difference, I would. And I, I, I wanted to make a difference not just in tennis, but I wanted to make a difference if I was good enough, and I really wanted to be number one because of that. Because in Make a Difference, she did. King keenly realized that many thought feminism was too radical and instead fought for equal rights via her tennis career on and off the court. But during my, my professional career, I really spent a lot more time off the court working than I did on because every time I get off the court, I just keep thinking about we gotta keep going forward, we've gotta keep changing things. Billie Jean King's commitment to fostering equality in such a contentious era marks her as not only ahead of her time, but as an important catalyst for the development and preservation of women's rights. Title IX didn't explicitly denote a woman's rights to athletics, but Billie Jean King helped ensure that the future of women's sports was not left up to misogyny, but instead left up to talented women athletes. King's first step in achieving this was the creation of the Virginia Slims Tour, the first professional women's league that is now cited as the basis for the, for the Women's Tennis Association. When the men's league refused to acknowledge the pay disparity, King and nine others signed a symbolic $1 contract and thus began women's tennis. King worked tirelessly to be taken seriously, eventually becoming the first female athlete to earn over $100,000. Her commitment to women's sports showed the American people that women's sports had a right to contend with the men's and that youth and amateur leagues were just as important for girls to participate in as they were for boys. In the wake of this, self-proclaimed male chauvinist Bobby Riggs was looking to prove that men's sports of any age are superior to that of women's by holding a Battle of the Sexes tennis match. King recognized the significance this battle would have for women in the long term and urged a fellow female tennis player, Mark Court, to deny his efforts. Mark goes, oh, by the way, I'm playing Bobby Riggs. I said, what? If you lose to him, it's a great excuse for the media to say, see, we shouldn't have women's professional tennis. Because that's what I was afraid of. I said, Margaret, I said, this is not a tennis match. You have to, but you have to win it. It's so important that you win it. She goes, yeah, oh, okay. Like, anyway, she lost so badly. The epoch of the women's rights movement reached one of its highest points with the Title IX Act of 1972. The act ensured that any federal funds given to a high school or college has to give equal pay to both boys and girls. Along with women's activists at the time, there were also people who were tearing down the improving reputation of women. Bobby Riggs, number world at the time, Wimbledon winner and singles, doubles, and mixed winner, boldly made the accusation that he could beat any te tennis player in the world after defeating Margaret Court in a landslide during the Mother's Day Massacre tennis match. He challenged Billie Jean King to a $10,000 winner-takes-all match. The match would break the media as one of the most influential sports Sporting events of the 20th century and acted as a crucial step for the progress of women in sports. Host to Riggs referred to him as a gambler and a hustler. Riggs, Riggs himself remarked that he would challenge anyone anywhere to gain public attention. He even went on to say that he could beat any woman in the world, even at 55 years old. A player on clay, grass, wood, cement, marble, or roller skates, Riggs remarked confidently in an interview at the U.S. Bank.
Indiana don't feel that way. Girls play nice game of tennis for girls. But when they get out there on a court with a man, even a tired old man of 55, they're going to be in big trouble. A 55-year-old guy, if he'll stay on his vitamin pill program, take those 415 vitamins every day, and jog and train and keep his tennis up, you, know, you can last and uh, beat those girls forever, Sally. He had trained much harder for his match against court and barely stepped on the court to prepare for his battle against King. He did photo shoots as King Henry VIII and filmed a pre-King race dressed in drag. In comparison, King was much younger, her, in her prime, and had trained relentlessly for the match. The beginning of the match commenced with a grand entrance from Riggs, carried by beautiful women. If you actually listen to what sportscaster Howard Cassell said when I was being brought out, he only talked about my looks. But when Bobby Briggs came out, he only talked about his achievements, King reflected in an interview. Riggs represented a generation of men who believe themselves to be superior to women in every way, and the way he speaks about King conveys the lack of disrespect she received at the time. All I can say is that I'm not discouraged. I'm still the same guy. I still feel the same. Before his match, Riggs underestimated her strength, yet at the end of the match, he accepted his defeat gracefully and recognized his defeat like he would to any ma other male opponent. With her victory over Riggs and her founding at the Women's Sports Foundation, King was well on her way to proving that women had a place in sports just as much as men did. She felt privileged to be able to have a platform and be involved in a period that allowed women to progress. She had a great opportunity, but also a great pressure to continue the progress that the Title IX and former progressive women athletes had made for her. Her match contributed to the involvement of women in sports, but also catalyzed young men and women to treat women's opportunity in sports equally. Men, they come up, they come up to me, and the, most time the men actually are the ones who have tears in their eyes. It's very interesting. They go, Billy, I was very young when I saw that match, and now I have a daughter. And I am so happy I saw that as a young man. And one of those young men at 12 years old was President Obama. Oh. And he actually told me that when I met him. He said, you don't realize it, but I saw that match at 12, and now I have two daughters. And it has made a difference in how I raised them. But her efforts after the Battle of the Sexes did not end there. After defeating Bobby Riggs and winning the U.S. Open, she protested that if the U.S. Open 1973 didn't give out equal pay, she wouldn't play next year along with many other female athletes. The U.S. Open became the first of the four major tournaments to give out equal pay. Her winnings in the courts did not merely match her efforts to transform the ideals of female athletes and women in the workforce. After the famous Battle of the Sexes, she formed the WTA to combat the wage gap of major tennis tournaments. Randy Yoder, a subsidiary of Bristol Myers, donated $55,000 to make the women's prize equal to the men's at the U.S. Open. Open. Although the U.S. Open obliged to handle equal prizes, the other major tournaments took more time to convince. They questioned why women should receive more money when they played less sets and said the men received higher ratings. Although King was a catalyst for future improvements, her work was only a step in the transformation of the era's view of female athletes. Although King has made numerous strides in women's equality and equal opportunity for everyone in the workforce, her efforts were sometimes unequally matched by the destructive institutions and figures who were unable to progress in their ideas. Whether it's John McEnroe's comment that Serena Williams will be ranked like 700 in the world in the men's game, or Djokovic's comment of women stumbling over the hormones and different stuff, people will not always be welcoming to change. Although King's efforts have made tennis one of the most progressive sports in closing the wage gap, major tournaments still continue to discriminate. The recent Western and Southern Open recently gave winner Serena Williams $495,000 and male winner Roger Federer $731,000 for winning the same tournament. There is not only an imbalance of pay that these minor and major tournaments. The company 538 has pointed out that in 2015 Wimbledon, only 38% of scheduled spots were even for women. With less spots, there is less press and less opportunity to further their careers. But the Billie Jean King Leadership Initiative is really about the workforce mostly and trying to change it so people can actually go to work and be their authentic self. Through these setbacks in our progressing society, Billie Jean King continues to use her position as a catalyst for equality. She started her leadership initiative in 2014 to give all an equal opportunity to be successful. She has great hope for the millennial generation to carry her legacy and make big things happen in a positive direction. Wish for everyone is to be able to be their authentic self 24-7. That would be the ultimate.